Hey guys, welcome to the Learn to Code CryptoBot series. I'm starting this with complete newbies in mind, mostly because I'm one of them. I've just started learning how to create my own bots and how coding works in general, and as a result, I'm uniquely aware of how confusing it all can be and how few resources are available when trying to apply general coding knowledge to how it interacts with smart contracts. In this video, we're gonna cover the basics of what you will need to start. Hopefully, by the end of this series, you will be able to automate whatever actions on chain you like and have at least a decent grasp of what is possible when creating your own bots. Let's start by downloading and installing a code editor. An editor allows you to write and edit the code and have the code run by the computer. In this and all future videos, I'll be using Virtual Studio Code. And if you plan to follow along, it'll probably be easier if you use this as well. To get it, head over to code.visualstudio.com and then download the version that's appropriate for your operating system. Okay, now that you have VS Code, you're gonna open it and you should see a welcome page that looks similar to mine, if not exactly the same. Now, let's create a new folder. To do this, all you have to do is create a folder on the desktop, and you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this one Bot Tutorial. Then you're gonna drag and drop that onto VS Code, And what'll change is up here in the Explorer, you're gonna see the new folder here with a drop down, and it's currently empty because the folder's empty. Now let's create a new file inside of this folder. Let me do that by clicking here, and we'll call this one lesson lesson one. And we're gonna call it .js because we're gonna be doing most of our coding in JavaScript. And the .js Let's VS Code know that we're coding in JavaScript. Boom, that's the first step. Now that we have the beginning steps active, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you have Node.js and NPM installed on the computer. Now for the life of me, I can't remember if Virtual Studio Code comes with a Node and NPM. So to check, what you're gonna do is go to the terminal here at the top, select new terminal, and then come down here to the command line. You're gonna type in node space dash V. For me, it comes up with version 16.17-1. If you don't get something similar to this with like a version and a number, that means you don't have node installed, which means you probably don't have NPM installed. To get node, just head over to nodejs.org and download the one that's recommended for users. Actually, I wanna update mine, so I'm gonna select here. And I'm gonna install the newest version for myself. Next, accept the terms. Now, once it's finished installing, I'm going to close out Virtual Studio Code and reopen it and check to see if the newest version installed correctly. Now let's check the Node version. And you can see here that it updated to the newest version of Node. And it should also give you the newest version of NPM, or at least a version of NPM. Okay, now that we have all that sorted out, let's run a quick test to make sure everything's working right. And at the same time, this is gonna be you if this is your first time coding, writing your first code. Come up here to where it says the number one, and we're gonna just make the terminal print something, right? And to do that, you wanna do console dot log parentheses, quotation marks, and then just whatever you want it to say. I'm gonna have it say, my first code. All right, now take a look at what it looks like. It's console.log, parentheses, I put quotation marks, my first code. Then you're gonna come down to the terminal, and what you're gonna do is write node, and then the name of the file, which is lesson, and then the number one, dot JS. Hit enter, and the log should print my first code. Congratulations. If that worked out, you've just created your first code. Just for reference, any text written inside of quotation marks is called a string. That'll be important to understand later on as we kind of get into things. Now, let's just quickly cover let, const, and var. 
Let const and var are ways to declare variables that can or cannot be changed, depending on what you need to do. So we can say let example, let example equal a string true. And then we're going to con console dot log example node lesson dot js oops oh yeah that's what i did node lesson one dot js i forgot to write the little one here that's why you got this error message right here so essentially let then you declare the name of the variable and then you declare what the variable is equal to so when i hit console log i put in here the variable that i want the console to log which is example and example equals the string true so it prints true now this works the same for const and var so let's say i do const and then i come down here it will write true or if i do var and then come down here It also prints true. The main difference between them has to do with how you structure your code. In certain situations, you can change the variable value for var or the variable value for let. Const though, cannot be changed once it's declared. And for that reason, I tend to use const more often than not, especially because I'm newer to coding and I don't wanna accidentally change a value somewhere along the line in my code. I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now about these, but if it's something you'd want to know more about or you're having trouble with, just reach out to me in the comments or on Discord or hit me up on Twitter. I'll help out however I can. And if you guys want, I'll do additional videos in the future about these specific topics. The last thing we're going to cover today are functions. Functions are arguably the most important part of coding. So if you want to create a function, call it function. So function, we'll call it function example. Add parentheses. Now inside of the function, and when I say inside of the function, I mean in between the curly brackets, that's where you want to put whatever you want the function to do. So in this case, I'm going to want the function to log to the console test. So inside of the curly brackets, I put console.log test. Now to have this function called when I do node space lesson one dot JS, you have to actually write out the name of the function. So I write example followed by parentheses. Now, when I come down here to the terminal, node lesson one.js, hit enter, and it logs test. So this is the intro video. With this, you have the building blocks or at least the beginning of a foundation for which we can start doing coding later on. In the next video, we're gonna start covering more technical coding stuff like how you can get information that you're going to need to write your bots into your code. An example of this that we'll probably use in the next video is your wallet balance, for instance, or the price of certain tokens. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, we can keep talking about getting more coins.